Milt, speaking of powerful tools, um, can you give our listeners an overview of what PowerGate is and how that benefits your clients? Sure. So the the product that implements the things we just talked about is a thing we call our Power Jobs, which is like it sounds like it's a tool for automating jobs, right? At the end of the thing, have it do these 25 steps. Now, the, the, the next thing is communicating the information that's in your corpus of CAD data between systems, right? So we have a product called PowerGate, which as the name implies, I hope, uh, is a gateway between your PDM system, Autodesk Vault, and other enterprise systems that have uh, APIs that can you know that you can consume to communicate with them. So the classic examples are PLM systems, procurement systems, and sort of the the mainstay of this is ERP, right? So if you think about the classic integration from a design engineer is I finish a design, I have a bill of materials that comes out of it, I have a set of drawings, maybe some other artifacts that have to be sent out for procurement or to to shop floor machines. Um, I need to communicate that to the system of record that the people who run the shop floor, the people who do procurement, et cetera, again, which is not my CAD system. So usually that's e either ERP or a system that's adjacent to ERP technically. So mm -hmm. we have a gateway product that actually automates the communication at the right time in your design cycle of say new bills of materials for new products or incremental changes to parts and bills of materials for existing products that are getting upgrades, correction actions, et cetera. So, and that's PowerGate. So Mel, you know, clearly uh, you have a great deal of integration experience with PLMs and with ERP systems and in procurement. But um, I'd like to ask you a question here regarding bombs, bill of materials. So sure. when comparing multi-level bombs before transferring them to an ERP, that helps obviously provide transparency between Vault and the ERP. But can you explain the value of this process and how it works within the context of Cool Orange's solutions? You know, that big issue, right? Just this idea of syncing and, and having that, you know, kind of that central source of truth for your bill of materials. So can you maybe walk our listeners through what that might look like from Cool Orange's sure. perspective? Yeah, no, that's a great point because if you think about uh, a complex manufactured product these days, multi-level bombs are now very complicated, right? Yeah. You know, gone are the days when we're, you know, you, you make something out of 10 parts, right? It's highly likely that things have thousands of parts, right? And those thousands of parts are, uh, for the manufacturing process, are, are are manufactured or procured from different disciplines, you know, casting and milling and um, you know, they have different kinds of raw material needs, et cetera. So if you think you've released the design change for a, a non-trivial manufactured product, that multi-level bomb could be six, seven, eight levels deep, right? And have thousands of parts, right? So I defy anyone to manually type that into uh, the input screen for the material master in SAP, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's almost impossible to do well. I mean, there's there's people who somehow you know are zen enough to get through that, but <laughs> it's it's simply not the best way to do things, right? And yeah. the fact that you would like to have a computer level dialogue about changes to those things and know incrementally what's changing when and keep those things synchronized correctly, the only real way to do that is through automation. So mm -hmm. having software that handles the communication of the slightly different data form of that information on the CAD side versus the ERP side, right? Because, you know, codes mean different things on different sides and, and, you know, one thing calls something this, but the other thing calls it that they're really the same thing. You have to translate them correctly every time, right? But keeping them synchronized permanently over time is nearly impossible for a human, but it's the kind of thing that, um, you know, software excels at. So doing that and doing it in detail correctly at the right time during your design life cycle is utterly required to survive the sort of modern design to manufacturing processes.